Hello and welcome and thank you for joining. This is the Maximizing Memory short 15-minute presentation hosted by Picmonic. We're going to be reviewing three evidence-based strategies to save time. Remember everything and ACE exams. Really, we're talking about improving your long-term memory retention. My name is Ken Robertson. I am one of the co-founders of Picmonic. And we're going to talk to you a bit about memory, as I said, how it works, memory phenomena, and then get into Picmonic and the learning system and how those scientific uh, evidence-based strategies are actually baked into Picmonic, making it the most efficient way to really remember anything. Now, first, as this is a memory presentation, we're going to start with a quick memory activity. So what we have on the screen here, I'd ask you to remember. This is for Neiman Pick disease, if you haven't learned it yet. It is a autosomal recessive disorder, most common in the Ashkenazi Jewish population. It's caused by a deficiency of the enzyme sphingomyelinase. Uh, it can see results with cherry red macula, hepatosplenum megaly, the enlarged liver and spleen, neurodegeneration, and on histologic exam, you uh, looks like foam cells. So. I mean, you're all smart here. If you're watching this uh, video, this webinar, you're definitely smart. However, are you going to be able to remember this in 20 minutes? Probably. A week from now, two weeks on an exam, on your board exam, when it comes up treating patients in the future? Well, according to something known as the forgetting curve, the answer is probably not. The reason why is because as soon as we learn something, we start forgetting it. Our memories degrade. That's just the way it is. But luckily, there's things we can do about it. And this little slope of this line, how quickly we're forgetting, we can actually decrease the slope of this line so we forget slower. And that's what we're gonna talk about. But first, to understand what memory is really all about. Memory is a process. From how you encode information to how you store it in your brain to how you retrieve it back out later. And at every one of these three steps, there's evidence-based ways where we can improve how we're going about it. Starting with encoding. This is all about your senses, your eyes, your ears, taste, touch. In education, we're mostly using our eyes and our ears, right? So that's what we'll focus on here. And there's some different memory phenomena, memory bias, like the dual coding theory. This one states, we process information that we encode from different senses down different neural pathways in the brain. And by using two different senses to get that information out, it's going to make it easier to get it back out later. Get it in, get it out. That's what I meant. So dual coding theory. Okay, here we go. Pictures worth a thousand words. We all know that, right? Why? Text is hard for our brain. It's difficult. We have to read. We have to figure out what all those little black letters mean, cipher it, categorize it in our minds. Whereas a picture, we look at a picture, it's instantly imprinted upon our minds. Like we can just remember that. So pictures are exciting. When our brains are excited, we're going to remember better. Excited, emotion. We're going to get into that too. Von Restorff effect. We remember what's unusual, things that stand out. So I have four Petri dishes here. What are we going to remember better? Probably the rhinovirus because it's got a rhinoceros virus its legs sticking out of it compared to that boring little influenza over there. It's kind of funny, right? And that's because the humor effect says anything that is more humorous when we're listening emotion, we're going to remember better. So we've got a bipolar bear knocking out the meningitis meningitis in one, one hand giving a flower to his love the floriquinolones flower queens on the other it's funny we remember things that are funny so if we can incorporate that and then another thing our minds are associative our memories are associative baker baker paradox says that if i meet this guy on the screen he's like hi my name is joe baker i might remember him however if he said my name is joe the baker oh i know what a baker is that's a pre-existing memory when i can attach new information to a pre-existing memory it makes it easier to recall the new information later. So I picture Joe with the little baker's hat out on, and I remember not just that, oh, he was the baker guy, but that he was Joe Baker. Minds are associative. So some key takeaways there on the encoding, again, these are memory phenomena, memory biases, a lot of documentation on these. The more we can excite our brains, humor, pictures, multiple senses, it's gonna make it easier to remember, and especially if we can draw associations. Moving on to the storage side, um, a mnemonic system is any store memory storage device, right? Acronym, probably one you're pretty familiar with. We all should be from Roy G. Bibb as a kid, the colors of a rainbow to 
add pi, the nursing process, or mud piles, anion gap, anion gap metabolic acidosis. These are great, but they're also super limited. The reason why is, I mean, look, in two of the same acronyms, we have a D, a P, an I, an E. What did that I stand for? Was that intervene, investigate, implement, iron? So it's kind of limited, but we can evolve acronyms a little bit by using phonetic associations. So this is where we're going to take the sound of the word. Let me use the coronavirus. Um, and you'll see why in a second. The coronavirus, I would think of pick corn virus. Pick corn sounds to me like pickle corn virus. Well, that's helpful because I can imagine a pickle corn virus. Here it is on the screen. Pickle corn with virus legs. Well, that rhinovirus I showed you earlier, he's a member of the coronavirus family. So every time I think of him, I imagine him eating a little pickle corn virus and I never forget he's a member of the coronavirus family. And then I evolve it with what's known as the method of low side, the memory palace, where now that rhinovirus climbing up the castle walls, he's got a, a runny nose and a thermometer for his fever because rhinovirus causes the common cold. And as he's getting up there chewing on his pickle corn, the sorcerer's stomach towers over him and squeezes a lemon on top of his head and melts him. Why? Because rhinovirus is killed by stomach acid. So, I mean, this is how memory competitors win memory championships and memorize a deck of cards in two minutes. It's really strong. And that's what Pitmonic does. We turn these characters, just like I showed you, into these, or these facts into these characters. Penicillin's the pencil villain. Warfarin's the war fairy. They go into scenes, setting stories with all the facts you need to know. It makes it easier to remember later. We've created thousands and thousands of these characters, thousands of different picture mnemonic videos that may seem weird. I get the methodology is weird, but it works. So we did do a IRB approved research study with a medical school. Um, this is peer reviewed, published on PubMed. Half of a first year class used black and white text to learn some information. Half of them used our picture mnemonic videos. Tested a week later, what you see in here in red on the screen. Control group gets eight out of eight questions right on a multiple choice exam. The picmonic group gets 12. They did 50% better than a, on that exam. And then we see the results really diverge over time. And after a month on paired matching exam, control group gets three right. Pygmonic group gets 12 right. That's 331% improvement in raw memory retention after a month. And it just gets that even better from there. So what we've done is we've taken that forgetting curve and we've decreased the slope of the line so that what we've forgotten, well, we're remembering it 300% longer. We're forgetting 300% slower. That's impactful, right? And then let's move on to retrieval. So on the retrieval side, first, what not to do. One of the biggest mistakes, biggest time sucks, and um, is rereading, reviewing notes. Although it can seem helpful and it's good, you know, at least to go back through notes once. If you keep doing it, it's going to give you this illusion of mastery. You're going to start. Your eyes are going to tend towards information you know. You're going to recognize it. You're going to feel good about yourself, but that doesn't mean you can actually recall it. What does? Well, practice makes perfect, right? Quiz yourself. Prompt yourself to actually recall that information. And by doing so, you're going to re-strengthen those memories stronger than if you were trying to re-encode them multiple times by rereading, reviewing notes. So quiz questions, board cell questions, even flashcards, any of that is going to massively cement those memories of what you've learned. We you practice once, we decrease the forgetting curve. That's sweet. Practice a bunch of times, repetition helps. Each time we review, we're decreasing that forgetting curve a little more, and that's super helpful. But we're all familiar with cramming for exams and then forgetting afterwards, right? Well, the spacing effect, another memory phenomena, says that if we took all these times I'm reviewing information here on the screen, and I spaced them out over increasing intervals in time, well, based on how much information I've forgotten at each point that I review the information, it's going to re-solidify that in my brain. So by spending the same amount of time studying, but spaced out over time in very smart ways, I'm going to remember not for days or a week, I'm going to remember for months. And if we take these three things together, picture mnemonics, practice active recall, and spaced repetition, which is what the mnemonic learning system is all about, I learn with picture mnemonics, repeated intelligently, I'm going to remember for years to come. We have testimonials, we have evidence on this. So... That's what we baked into the mnemonic learning system. Play picture mnemonic videos, 
immediately quiz yourself on it to ingrain the memories and then repeat that intelligently over time. And we're going to hop over to a demo so I can actually give you an example. I asked you to remember some information about new and pick disease, right? Take a second. What can you recall there? All right. Let me play a Pygmonic for Neiman Pick Disease. Now, as with all Pygmonic videos, all of these are going to be under five minutes, on average, two to three minutes long, between what we call educational and story audios. So let me play that for you. This Pygmonic describes Neiman Pick Disease, portrayed by a pick in the man's knee. This is an autosomal recessive disorder, described by the recessive chocolate, which is caused by a deficiency of the enzyme sphingomyelinase, shown by the broken sphinx on my leg. Neiman Pick disease is more common in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, represented by the yarmulke. Signs and symptoms of this disease include a cherry red macula, which can be visualized on fundoscopic exam, depicted here by the cherry eyes. Hepatosplenomegaly can also be appreciated on physical exam, shown by the liver and spleen balloons, due to the accumulation of sphingomyelin and other lipids in these organs. Patients also display neurodegeneration, illustrated by his degenerating nerve arm, on histologic exam, Neiman Pick disease can be diagnosed by the visualization of foam cells, represented by the foam from the man's mouth. So to recap, Neiman Pick disease is an autosomal recessive disorder, which is caused by a sphingomyelinase deficiency and has an increased prevalence in Jewish populations. A cherry red macula can be seen on fundoscopic exam. Patients may display hepatosplenomegaly and neurodegeneration. Foam cells are a diagnostic finding seen on histologic exam. That was that educational audio. We're taking this key fact list over on the left, introducing new characters. Now we're going to have a story to tie them all together. Knee man them has a pick in his knee because of his misplaced obsession with the wrong woman. At first, he tried to win her over with recessive chocolates because she looked as sweet as cherry pie. And when he learned that her mother liked nice Jewish boys, he converted. Then she told him that she preferred worldly men with exotic pets. And soon he returned from Egypt with a sphinx on his leg. Finally, on her birthday, his liver and spleen made for ugly balloons, and his wilting nerves were a poor excuse for flowers. So when she saw him foaming at the mouth like she was a dish, she defended herself, and that's why there's a pick in his knee. And then right after we learn something again, let's immediately quiz on it. So this is going to auto-advance us into a quiz. These are going to be short recall questions, all in the name of time and efficiency, just trying to get us to recall what we learned. Which of the following is a sign or symptom most likely associated with Neiman Pick disease? Cherry red macula. Neiman Pick most likely results in which of the following? Neurodegeneration. Now, maybe I'm having troubles remembering what he was holding in his hand really right there. I'll just click the blue box, give myself a hint. That's right. We had the autosomal recessive. Now, we'll get one wrong just for, uh, again, illustrative purposes and so it's good. Canadian population, and I'm going to end this quiz early to show. So all this is going to be tracked, right? How many times you get things right, wrong, how long it takes you to answer the questions, whether you use that hint or not. All of that is going to be factored in the spaced repetition algorithm, which over here on your nav bar, you can find on your home screen. Click to the home screen, daily quiz with spaced repetition over here on the right. I can also see my quiz performance. And it's saying I've got one fact I need to review today. I will, can also find this spaced repetition in the adaptive learning recommended in the recent section up here. So what I just got wrong and saying at least get that right. Stuff I got right, I got right quickly. I'm not going to see for maybe a day or two. And then if I get it right again a few you know, more days after that, if you're continually reminded of the stuff you've learned before, it's going to improve your long-term retention. That's the core of the Pythonic learning system. You're going to play these videos, educational story, do the quiz, keep up with the spaced rep. You'll be good to go for long term. Now, pause real quick. As far as finding content, you can search. That's going to be pretty self-explanatory. Start typing. Find what you're looking for. Browse is where you can find all this content organized in different ways. So courses is going to have for medicine, your farm, micro, path, biochem, a ton of different courses. If I scroll down to nursing, you know, we have fundamentals, med search, peds and psych, PA, I'll organize even a little differently for you with those infectious diseases. I can also go through it by body system, cardio, gastro, nervous system. And then within there, you know, you'll see it by physio, farm, path. Or one thing everyone gets really excited about, how do we save you time finding content? Well, 
follow along by page number of your books. So med students, we've got first aid or pathoma in here. Clicking into these, you just go right in. Oh, that's right, I'm on page 38, struggling to remember some of this information. Pop right in. On the nursing side, we have a lot of your most common textbooks in here. Lewis, Lily, and PA, Pants Prep Pearls. I know almost all of you are using it, so follow along by page number. When you are, focused on an exam, I will point out, you'll see these little three dots all over the app. Say you have a farm test coming up. You can click that and filter your daily quiz to just that information or make a playlist of any level of the content, modify it for what works best for you. I'm gonna hop back into Neiman Pick real quick just to show you a couple more things, maybe even before I do. When do you use Picmonic? Often question, common question we get. You do it along with your assigned reading, course notes when you're prepping to go to class the night before, preferably find that content, watch the short videos, do some quiz questions. It's going to create this information framework in your brain so that when you go to class, you can really get that conceptual understanding, but you're getting it on top of a durable framework of information. So it's just going to really help you even with that conceptual understanding. Um, you know, and if you're using uh, some other resources like Osmosis or Online Med Ed, you'll see those videos linked in here. You can watch the Picmonic videos and then online meta osmosis in less time than you would actually spend watching the path or farm videos of other picture mnemonic resources out there. So save time, watch cartoon videos for how it really helps, and then watch the real good illustrative videos um, put out by some other companies. After class, come in, create custom playlists for the content. Oh, and I need to show you this. You can even add facts to help you remember. Um, and then keep up with that daily quiz. I'm just going to keep hitting on that while I do. It's about 10 minutes a day to keep up with the entire content library over time for spaced rep. Super helpful. And even, you know, when to do it, do it on your phones. iOS and Android apps. Great for keeping up with the daily quiz on the go. Back to Neiman Pick. I do need to show you about adding the facts. We include the most frequently tested, hard to remember information. But there might be other information you might need to remember. So, say... The fact that you can see, you know, it looks like zebra bodies on EM is something that, hey, it's important for me to remember. You just come down here and type that in. Zebra bodies on EM. Maybe your teacher said it was important. It was mentioned in another video. You saw it in first aid or another book. Well, I type zebra bodies. It's going to recommend I use a zebra who I'm going to flip around right here. Now, this cute little guy eating these Reese's chocolate because I'll all remember through that linking. Hit continue. And then when I scroll down, I'm going to see in my facts, zebra bodies on EM, there he is. Our team of 15 plus doctors, nurses, PAs are consistently reviewing what the medical community is adding to our baseline picmonics, verifying it's academically accurate, approving it, and that'll be recommended back to you along with the community facts. We can see hyporeflexia has been added, which you hypo, you're always going to have the hippo with the reflex hand. I really like that guy there. I click plus, click plus, I add him to my Picmonic as well. He's part of it. While I'm over here in the fact list, I should click through a few of these, show you where other videos are linked in, as well as when you come to where it's relevant, cherry red macula, you'll see real medical imagery right alongside the, uh, the mnemonics, foam cells. There it is. So pretty powerful there. You can, you'll also see these, uh, Little three dots in here. You can click on that and see related picmonics. This is similar to the glossary over here. Consistent characters. So you'll always see these enlarged liver and spleen balloons for hepatosplenomegaly. Consistent characters. Um, yeah, just a reminder, what we're trying to do, trying to keep it as efficient as possible to help you remember everything, you know, progress on, ace your exams, ace your boards, be a great healthcare provider in the future. We really hope Pigmonic can help. Really appreciate you taking the time to leave. Let's see. And it looks like that's all the time we had. If you have any questions, reach out to us, feedback at Pigmonic.com, or click the little chat bubble in the bottom right of our application, our website, anything like that. Let us know what we can do to help, and best of luck to you.